Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, Amateur Radio Call Sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from John Vucinich, AD8IQ. And he has a very simple one sentence question, or two, I guess. Which is more important in an antenna system, the lowest SWR or the 50 ohm impedance? Depending on the frequency, I can get one, but not both. In actual fact, in all cases of simple antennas like dipoles, you can get one, but not the other. Um, you have to make a choice what you want to do. Before we jump in to answer John's question, I'd like to pay a special thank you to Conrad Aquino. Uh, who is a patron, you too can become a patron of this channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og. Now let's take a look at John's question. I give a presentation down at the Duke City Ham Fest in 2019, and this is video number 221. Okay, if you go to Ask Dave and look for 221, or search on Fun with SDR, you, you'll find this, okay? And here we look at a variety of things that can happen, but what's important is that, is this chart here. Now, this is the impedance of a dipole antenna with a conductor diameter being a thousandth of the wavelength, which would be normal. Okay, the resonance Resonant uh, is um, black and the reactance is blue. Okay, if you've got negative, it's inductive. If you've got capacitive, it's too short, so on. Okay, okay so if you're at a half wavelength, you're up in this region right here. And if we go into that a little bit more carefully, okay, and we look at an antenna that is a half wavelength, exactly a half wavelength, the resistance at half a wavelength is here at actually 73 ohms, and the reactance is here at this point, about 42 ohms. And we've looked at the impedance of a di dipole antenna, okay, and this is what you get right there when you are tangent to this line. You're at the um, impedance of 50 ohms right there, and your reactance is going to be a little different, okay. So your resistance will be 72 ohms plus 172 ohms um, divided by 0.4 that's the delta lambda, or we get uh, 72 ohms plus 30 ohms per change in, in lambda. I've done a lot of work in here. The height above the ground is going to change the feed point impedance of a uh, balanced dipole. Okay, uh, they're a nicely done dipole, and I do quite a few more examples here uh, to to work this out. But the point is, if the antenna is resonant, if it is a half wavelength, it will have a resistance plus a um, some uh, uh, reactance. Okay, this reactance will not be zero at resonance. Okay. But for this to be zero, you're going to have to tune off, which means this tunes off, and you get two different numbers. So there's two different numbers you want to look at. The 50 ohm point we may be very hard to find because, as I showed in this thing here, a half wavelength actually in free space resonates at about 73 ohms. Okay? So in order for that to be have the 73 ohms resistance, there's going to be a little bit of reactance in there on this, the difference between this blue line and here. Okay, note that the two cross, 
where the impedance and the reactants cancel each other is a slightly different frequency. So 50 ohms you can tune for by looking for zero ohms for the reactants. Okay, but the lowest SWR is going to be on a different frequency because this will not be 50 ohms at the half wavelength point. It's going to be something slightly different. So if you tune for lowest SWR, remember you've got your real line down here, your imaginary line up here, and you've got, uh, say, this much right here. Well, what is the lowest SWR? The SWR is the absolute value of some something in here that balances these two. All right. And it's going to have a little bit of a reactance to get the least magnitude of the SWR. So you're going to look on your meter and go, gosh, my lowest SWR is, say, 1.5 to 1, which is common for a lot of antennas. Okay. Very few antennas will tune down to 1 to 1 SWR unless you've got some mitigating factor like some lump reactants or traps or something like that. Okay, this would be about as good as you get. This will not be the reactive or the uh, resonant frequency. The resonant frequency, when you tune it to 50 ohms with zero impedance, is going to be slightly different and will have a slightly higher SWR. Okay, now the SWR is um, the uh, comes from the reflection coefficient on the thing, and at 50 ohms, or rather at zero impedance, uh, as long as you've got a match on the impedance here, you won't have any reflected power and everything goes out. That's a one to one SWR. But what I'm trying to tell you is that the feed point impedance of like a dipole is rarely 50 ohms. And the resonance point where you have zero reactants could be uh, several tens of kilohertz away from the lowest SWR. So let me answer your question directly. First of all, go to video 221, all right? Go to video 221 and watch it. Um, there's about a 50 minute presentation there that has questions that I gave at the Duke City Ham Fest that's in Albuquerque um, in 2019. Now, which is most important, lowest SWR or the 50 ohm impedance? Lowest SWR is the kindest to your transmitter. Okay, lowest SWR. Most people just go for lowest SWR. Because if you go for 50 ohm impedance, you're going to find a reactive element there. Uh, in a real dipole, okay? A real dipole, you will never be able to tune to one-to-one. -to -one. If you're tuning it to one-to-one, -to -one, you've either got some losses somewhere or you're particularly lucky in getting exactly a 50-ohm feed line impedance, okay? So I'm not sure that helps because that's a little bit of a confusing discussion. Bottom line, the lost SBR point and the resonant point are often, almost always, in fact, not the same frequency. They aren't terribly far apart, but they aren't the same frequency. Just go for the lowest SWR. It's easier on everything. It uh, takes everything into account. And the, about the best you're going to do on a dipole, an ordinary dipole, in most cases, uh, is that it will be about 1.4 to 1.6 to 1. And there's nothing wrong with that. Your transmitter will work with that just fine. So I hope that answers your question. For those of you who would like to help support this channel financially, you may certainly do so. First, click subscribe, second like, and also go to decastlercom slash support for different ways that you can help support this channel financially. Until we next meet, 73.